Hi and welcome to Temeco. In this video, we will look at another example where we will derive the constraint equations for a crankshaft mechanism. As you noticed in our last lesson, for the simple pendulum case, deriving the constraint equations requires knowing which type of constraints and bodies we have in our system. Knowing these aspects is even more important than trying to imagine how the system will move or how the relative movement between the bodies is. Actually, many multi-body dynamic software take advantage of this fact to generate the constraint equations of any system mathematically. Let's begin. In this first part of this example topic, we are going to select the coordinate systems for each body in the crankshaft mechanism. Also, the first two constraints of the system will be derived during this video. Let's bring in an inertial coordinate system. Remember, we need to have a frame of reference which we can use to make sense of all the values obtained in the modeling process. This inertial or global frame of reference is placed at the lower left revolute joint of the crankshaft mechanism for our convenience. As the next step, let's name the points where the constraints are located. Let's also define one body reference system in each of our mechanism bodies, starting with the ground. Let's put a ground fixed reference system with axes yg and xg located on the point O. For the crank, let's add a body reference system located at the center of the crank with the x axis aligned with the body's longitudinal axis. In this case, let's make the crank body A. Let's apply the same concept for the shaft. In this case, we will call it body B. And for the case of the block, we will add a body reference system at the center of it with the x axis oriented horizontally. The block will be our body C. Now it will also be a convenient time to write the vector of generalized coordinates. This can be written as q equals rxa, ryA, theta a, rxb, ryB, theta b, rxc, ryC, theta c transpose. Next, it's our turn to define the constraints one by one mathematically. Let's start with the ground crank constraint. We know it is a revolute joint which can be defined as follows. During the whole range of movement, the position of point O, defined via the ground attached reference system, must be equal to the position of the same point O, defined via the crank attached reference system. We can express this mathematically as RGO equals RAO, RG plus A U bar G O minus RA plus AA U bar A O equals zero. Let's eliminate zero values from our obtained equation. Now, considering that the terms u bar x bar ao equals minus la by 2 and u bar y bar ao equals 0. And rearranging the equation in its scalar terms, we end up having our first two constraint equations. C1 is rxa minus la by 2 cos theta a equals 0. C2 is RYA minus LA by 2 sin theta A equals 0. In the next video, we are going to derive the rest of the constraints for our system. Thanks for watching and see you soon.